In this section, we'll review the significant figure rules for measurements. The first rule is that all non-zero digits are significant. And in the example of 41, there are two significant figures because both of these digits are non-zero. The next rule is zeros are significant whenever bounded by non-zero digits. So here we see in the example 102, there are three significant figures. The zero in the middle is considered significant because it has a non-zero digit on the left and a non-zero digit on the right. The next rule is leading zeros are never significant. These would be zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit. So in the example 0 0.04, there's only one significant figure. The zeros to the left of the four are not significant because they're leading zeros. They're just there to tell you the scale of the measurement, but they are not important digits that a measurer had estimated. Next rule is, if a decimal point is explicitly expressed, then all zeros to the right of the first non-zero digit are automatically significant. Check out the example 0 0.060. That has two significant figures where the trailing zero there is significant. It's to the right of a non-zero digit and the decimal point had been expressed. But another way to tell is, ask yourself, did the person have to put that zero there when they had conveyed the measurement? They could have just put 0 0.06 and stopped. But the fact that they put that extra zero there and took the time to do it at the end means that it is considered a significant digit that the measurer had estimated. And finally, the last rule is, if a decimal point is not explicitly expressed, then all zeros to the right of the last non-zero digit are not significant. In the number 40, we see that there's no decimal point, and we also see that it has a trailing zero. Now, that zero has to be there in order to tell the scale of the measurement. For example, you couldn't just put four. Like, that wouldn't be enough. You have to put the zero down to convey that it's the scale of the measurement. Um, so, that only has one significant figure. Look at the examples below and use the rules given to decide how many significant figures each measurement has. Okay, let's try the first one. 0 0.038 meters. How many significant figures does it have? The zeros out front are leading zeros. Those are never significant. So this measurement only has two significant figures. Let's write out each of the digits and underline which ones are significant. Okay, in the number 208, which digits are significant? They're actually all significant. The zero is sandwiched between two non-zero digits, so it does count as a significant figure. In the measurement 10.60 miles, that has four significant figures. They could have written it 10.6 and stopped, but the time was taken to put that extra zero on the end when they didn't really have to in order to convey what the number is. And so that means that that zero is significant. Four significant figures. How about 8,900 years? The trailing zeros here are not significant. It only has two sig figs. 
If they wanted the zeros to be significant, they would have to put that decimal point down. But the fact that they didn't put it down means that those zeros are not significant. Okay, point 0306 has three sig figs. Point 0.3020 has four because the trailing zero there was put there on purpose, uh, meaning it must have been an estimated digit. Point 0.002 has just one sig fig. 10,020 would have four. Uh, just that trailing zero there is not significant. Here we have 2 times 10 to the 2. And whenever scientific notation is involved, the power of 10 doesn't really uh, play a part in figuring out how many significant figures there are. We actually just want to focus on the 2.0. And keep in mind, they could have written 2 times 10 to the 2, but they didn't. They took the time to write 2.0 times 10 to the 2, and that means that it's got two sig figs. And the number 600 feet has actually only one significant figure. If they wanted it to have three, they should have put a decimal point at the end. But they didn't. Exact numbers are treated as having infinite significant figures. And counts of discrete quantities also have infinite sig figs. So how many significant figures are in each of the following? Provide a number from zero to infinity. Now when a person collects six rocks, are they making a count or a measurement? That is, of course, a count. Uh, and since it's a count, it has infinite sig figs. It means it's 6.000 repeated forever. It's exactly six. The distance from Earth to Sun is estimated to be 1.496 times 10 to the eighth kilometers. Is that a measurement or a count? Well, it is a measurement, or at least an estimate. So this has four significant figures. Scientists have determined the speed of light to be exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. You might be tempted to think it has nine sig figs, but there's one word here that makes it not nine. Exactly. That means it has infinite sig figs. A scientist estimates the universe to be approximately 13.8 billion years old. It's an estimate. So that's three sig figs. It's not exact. Now sometimes we're going to want to do calculations with significant figures. We can get a sense of the precision of a measurement from the place value of its rightmost significant digit. For example, a measurement expressed to the hundredths place is more precise than a measurement expressed to the tenths place. Now there's different rules for addition and subtraction versus multiplication and division. I'm going to start with the addition and subtraction rules. First, determine which of the measurements is least precise. To do this, we want to locate each measurement's estimated digit, which is the rightmost significant digit that it has. And the measurement that terminates in the largest leftmost place value is least precise. Okay, 
Check out the example of 0.324 plus 0.06. Which measurement appears to be least precise? The least precise number here is actually the 0 0.06. The 0 0.06 is expressed to the hundredths place. And the 0.324 is expressed to the thousandths place. Now what is that number's most precise place value? The hundredth. And now it asks us, what place value should our final answer be rounded to then? The answer is hundredth. We want our final answer to be no more precise than the least precise number that was used in the calculation. In order to demonstrate the logic behind this, I'm going to use some vertical addition. We want to line up the place values and line up the decimal point. And then we just want to add them like in the old grade school way, right? So 4 plus 0 makes 4. 2 plus 6 makes 8. 3 plus 0 is 3. And that's the calculator result. It's what you'd get if you punched it into a calculator. But it is not the correct answer according to sig figs. The answer of 0.384 would actually be too precise. The idea is that we don't really know what digit goes here. Whoever did the measurement didn't have a precise enough ruler in order to make any determination on what that digit's value is. For that reason, it could really be anything. And so we don't want to say at the end that we're confident in the 4 here when we're really not. So what we want to do is we actually want to use that uh, 4 to round the hundredths place value. And so the final answer, according to um, sig figs, would be 0.38 feet. And it's all about just being aware of the uncertainty in your calculation and expressing that. Try this one for yourself. Okay, so the least precise number here is actually the 20. 35.4 is estimated to the tenths. 10.23 is estimated to the hundredths. But 20 is only estimated to the tens place, which is the least precise place value by far. So, according to the procedure that I showed uh, previously, we want to round our final answer to the tens as well. Let's go ahead and set up the vertical addition here. All right, I'll carry out the calculation. I get 25.63. So now all we have to do is figure out what place value we need to round to. And it's actually the tens place. And our five can be used to either round up or stay. Our final answer is actually going to be 30.
Now let's look at the rule for multiplication and division, which is actually very different from the addition-subtraction rule. For multiplication and division, the number of significant figures retained may not exceed the least number of significant figures in each of the original measurements involved. First, determine which of the measurements has the least number of significant figures, and then identify how many sig figs does it have. Let's do that now. We see here that the 25 has two significant figures, the 3 has one, and the 10.0 has three. So the number with the least sig figs is the three. So we need one sig fig in our final answer too. Let's go ahead and multiply these things to get the calculator result. Twenty-five times three times ten will actually make seven hundred and fifty. Uh, meters times meters times meters makes meters cubed. Okay. And then we'll do it here using sig figs. What should our final answer be according to sig figs? So our final answer will actually be 800 meters cubed. You gotta round it to one sig fig. Go ahead and try this one. 2500 divided by 25.0. Alright, the number with the least sig figs here is the 2500. Uh, it has two sig figs, whereas the one on bottom has three. So, two sig figs. That's what we need to give in our final answer. So let's go ahead and find the calculator result. a hundred and the units are meters per second but uh oh there's a problem our calculator result only expresses one sig fig but we need to express two there is actually a clever way to express two sig figs in this situation. Uh, what we'd have to do is use scientific notation. One hundred is one times ten to the two. But in order to express two sig figs, I have to make it one point oh times ten to the two. Now it has two sig figs.